this week on Top Boy T Rod, Asia's biggest and only all female comedy chat podcast. We are going back to school, and not just any ordinary school. That's right. We're off to close out our last day of term at the School of Rock, where we've been honing our rock star skills for the last year with our special guest, Singapore's only rock station, One FM ninety one point three's very own rock chick DJ Jill Lim. Who hosts the nightly show One FM's Reality Check? It has been a very stressful experience as we spend so much time practicing our instruments for the ultimate rock band showdown happening later on the show. Will we be able to get our act together? Or just be one hit wonders and fade into rock oblivion forever? In this episode entitled School of Rock. <laughs> Somebody ripped the string. Oh my god, and my keyboard! Some of the keys are gone! My guitar is scratched and out of tune! Ah! And my drum kit! There's a hole in the tom toms! Someone's sabotaging us, guys! And I bet it's those rocker chicks from the panty liners. They've been jealous of us and our panties ever since we won the championship last year. Hmm, agreed, Raven. So, what do we do besides get better panties, huh? I want to rock! Uh, yeah, but we can't rock nothing with these broken instruments. Plus, we're like 12 hours away from the School of Rock annual rock fest showdown tonight. Anyone got ideas? Only one thing to do. Quit the band! What? What? Yeah, quit! You can't just quit the band like Ted Cruz did in the presidential elections just because our instruments have been sabotaged. Let's get it repaired, like now! But it's a Sunday. Every music store in town is closed. Not every store. Whoa, Mama! Who, 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 who are you? Your rock guitar goddess. <laughs> That's the first I've heard of it. Are you related to Cinderella? Are you kidding me? Cinderella is lame. She's into ballet, paying taxes, and housework. I'm a thousand times cooler. I'm Jill, resident a rock radio DJ from Singapore's only rock station, ninety one point three one FM. Besides that, I've got Joan Jett and Melissa Etheridge on speed dial. Wow, that's impressive. Huh, I've got those two on speed dial too. Okay, Raymond, whatever. Uh, Jill, we love rock DJs and all, but we're not interviewing for a new band member. I know that. I don't want to be in a band. I'm here to help you get your mojo back into your instruments before the rock showdown tonight. Step into my intergalactic motorbike, and I'll take you to a place where you can get your instruments fixed. Sounds cool. Anything for a free bike ride. Come on, guys. Okay, ladies, get ready. Hang on. Here we go. And more galactic than a supermassive black hole. Introducing Asia's biggest and only all-female English comedy chat podcast. Welcome to Tomboy T Rod. I mean, it was so smooth. My windbreaker just broke. Yeah, and my hair—what a mess! <laughs> you look like Einstein, Joanna. I know. I need hair gel. Bad. Hey, look, a, a fountain. I'm making a wish. Wow! Look at this place. It looks like a magical garden. And yet, it looks really familiar. I wonder why. 
Because you never really left. We're at the school of rock. Huh? Huh? What? What is what? that? How, how does that work? What school? What do you mean? The school of rock is where the most gifted talents have come through since the 60s. This is where the Beatles played their first gig and Green Day graduated from. It's a creme de la creme of killer musicians and rockers. Yeah, baby. So, you mean to say that this fountain can help repair our instruments? Uh, that's mildly putting it. The fountain is the bedrock of everything rock and roll. That's so cool. Let me wish for you now. Hey, hey, don't do that. I wish that our instrument would get repaired and that we'll be able to beat those. Ah! 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 Getting attacked again this episode is really scary. Oh, yeah, like just who writes these scripts? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, but hey, you know what? Joanna went to the fountain on her own volition, so don't blame me if she annoyed it and got sucked through. <sighs> Same shit every week. But let's focus on Jill right now, our own fairy godmother of rock and roll. This is Jill from 1FM 91.3, which I believe is Singapore's only rock station, right? Yeah, it is. <laughs> Jill, welcome to the show. Tell us your journey to DJ stardom. Thanks, man. Um, I don't know if it's a journey. It was more of like a... Well, before me, the DJ before me was my sister. So... <laughs> I know, right? Turn, turn, turn. Plot yeah. thickens. So, if everyone can just say K-Long together. <laughs> K-Long. K-Long. So when, she was, when she was leaving to become a lawyer, they were holding competitions to get a new DJ on to replace her. And it just so happens that I was a DJ. I was a person chose to fill the shoes, which obviously, a lot of hate. Everyone's like, oh, you're a sister. No wonder you got the job. Which, perhaps, I'm not sure. I mean, in my opinion, I was better than the other two girls, but... I, I don't know. I don't really care if people think that because that may have been how I got the job, but they're not going to give me the job for the next six years just because she was my sister. So I guess I must have improved in some way. Yes. That, that's a new meaning to nepotism, right? Yeah. yeah right? <laughs> <laughs> so what's a typical day for you at the station? At the how station? Because um, yeah. the show is from 8 to midnight, so I usually get in at about 6-ish. Yeah. Five, yeah. Well, yeah, about 6. Um, and then... On the way to work, I listen to a lot of Australian radio because they've got really, really good stuff. Mm -hmm. And then I rip it off. <laughs> <laughs> I get to the studio, read, read the news or read what's going on on Stomp or Yahoo, Singapore, the Yahoo, and try to get a few couple, a couple of local stories that make yeah. it relevant. And then I try to use everything I heard on the Australian radio station and try to put a local spin on it because... Nothing is worse than listening to Singapore radio and they're like, guess what this man did in New York? Have you heard about the woman in Switzerland? Like, who the hell cares? Yeah. Like, talk about my country. What's going on in Singapore? But you used to have a co-host, right? Um, and he left the show? Yeah. Yeah, Josh was my second co-host and now he's on Kiss 92. I mean, we're all in the same compound. We're like 20 meters away from each other. But yeah, they, they, they do that a lot. They switch around. So how was it? I mean, like, you know, I've, I've seen that the dynamic has changed when you know he left uh, the, the the reality um check show and like how has it been like for you to like sort of you know like you know it, it you know it's always different when there's two people and then now you have to fill someone else's shoes personally i don't like being the anchor really and when i started radio i was with rod montero okay i had the smallest role so i like being the color the anchor does all the serious things and the stories and then the color is a jackass that gets to be the jackass. <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes now that I'm, this, I'm solo and I am the anchor, there's no one there in the studio to say, okay, Jill, re rein it back in. Okay, hey, Jill, not so much. Oh, Jill, tone it down. So yeah. I do find myself, yeah, being a bit snarky to the listeners. <laughs> Funny thing, and you're always told that. You're always told, love the listeners, love them, love the listeners. But the funny thing is, the night show is catered to younger, a younger demographic, allegedly. Mm -hmm. yeah. But so far, all the listeners like it when I mean to them. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's, it's, 
it's refreshing because you know a lot of I mean when you you know it's interesting that you brought up like how you're supposed to always love your listeners but it 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 makes it seem like a lot of the DJs are very generic across the board you know and then here you are you know in a rock station and you're supposed to be a little bit edgier yeah. and that and it, I think it works I mean I think you also need to be able to tell what the person is like, which is really difficult to do over the phone in a two-minute phone call. That's right. <laughs> but, I mean, he, yeah, so you, you make a few jokes. If they don't get it, move on. But most of them yeah. are... I've, I haven't gotten any complaints. So, yeah, I mean, I do love... Obviously, you love the listeners, but you don't need to, like, suck their balls all the time, you know? Exactly, right? Yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah. Now mm. that you're doing it alone, do you feel like you're talking to yourself sometimes? <laughs> I mean, essentially, that's what it is, I guess. But, um... I don't because if you listen to the show, I get a lot of callers, which yeah. make makes make, which fills up the show a lot better in my opinion because no one, well I don't like listening to one person's voice, talk about random things and laugh at their own jokes. That's right. So I try to make yeah. it a point to daily get a talk topic daily where people can call in and then we we talk to each other about it. That's cool. I mean, like the good thing is people are calling in, so no matter how late they are, people are still listening to yeah, you. Right? Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Yes, you live up the night atmosphere. People <laughs> doing like late assignments or for us when writing scripts. That's right. I'm yeah. a fan. I'm 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 one of the listeners. So yeah. <laughs> I know that. I mean, like there's a lot of moments or happy moments or, or best moments of when you're working in the station but what is your most memorable one that you you still remember and maybe you can tell us a little bit about it the best one mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. or the worst one it doesn't yeah. matter or the worst one <laughs> or the funny one um oh my god there's just so many she doesn't know <laughs> I mean, when you when you work four hours a day, it's pretty hard to complain about it and find the worst moment of the job because you work four <laughs> hours and you sh- really yeah, should yeah. shut up and be grateful. Yeah. And the best one, I don't know, man. I'm my mind goes to meeting slash, but that was all right. It wasn't the best, but it was pretty cool. I mean, I'm not <laughs> complaining about that either. Yeah, I mean, I met slash too a couple of years ago because I mean, like I was working in a in a in a in a station, like I was working at Sony, so. You know, when he came by, you know, we got the chance to um, interview him for an entertainment oh, show nice. that we were doing. So I was really like bowled over by how humble he was. Like he's so cool. He's been in Singapore so many times. They need to just give him a PR. I think so, right? <laughs> <laughs> but I guess the best, the best time would probably be any time someone compliments the show. That's pretty cool. Or when people call up and they know my name. It's like, oh shit, you really do pay attention. That's awesome. <laughs> Wow, has it ever happened when somebody calls up and they don't know your name? All the time, That's all so... the time. I'm always being called Jean. <laughs> yeah. Oh. 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 Or that DJ that hosts oh, the uh, yeah. night station. show. Uh, Wrong radio station. Basically. That's a, ge- that's a generic syndrome I was telling you about. Like, yeah, but then you see, I blame all of that on education because you have stupid ass <laughs> dumb fuck courses like MassCom. <laughs> no offense if anyone's in MassCom. <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't make it so maybe this is a little bit of my bitterness not making it to MassCom <laughs> but like from what I realised everyone who's gone through MassCom they learn very generic things on how to present like this is how mm-hmm. you present so learn it this way and then they start mimicking their teachers or mimicking their peers they don't go out and watch like MTV News or E, yeah. e- News which is a really really good example of how you can do alternative I mean, as, as lame as it sounds, I know they do a lot of celebrity tabloid news, but they're serious tabloid news when someone dies, exactly. and they know how to yeah. switch it up and be solemn, and then from a solemn story, go to, hey, Britney Spears, she's crazy again. <laughs> and I think that's yeah. something that's really important to learn as a presenter of either like in front of the camera or in radio. So I, they don't teach that in school. They're just like, this is one way, learn it. And they're always saying, it's five minutes past 12. Who in yeah, who ever says that? that? When have you ever gone up to someone on the street and say, "Hey, uh, excuse me, do you have the time?" And they go, "Oh, it's twenty past six. No one says that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I think it's quite sad, though. I mean, the school is there to only provide your foundation. You're supposed to like, you know, get the foundation and build on it. You know, totally like agree. Most students will like other countries will, but it's just that our local students they don't, they just don't go to take the extra step of like trying to advance your own skills and. Because there's no tuition for mass comm. If there were, they would. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. There's no extra classes, you know, to uh, tell you how to be an individual. Well, there, there is. 
the, yeah, there's no classes to be individual, but there is other classes. But, yeah, yeah, but hello, you got a brain. You still watch a lot of TV though. I think like you just watch a lot of TV, find a show mm. that you really, really enjoy watching and you really like the jokes and you understand the jokes. And then honestly, the best way to learn is to copy first and then slowly make it your own and then... Exactly. Imitation is the best art, uh, you know, form of, you know, flattery. <laughs> yeah. So let's start doing that, people. So are you relieved that you don't have to deal with Glenn Ong and the Flying Dutchman on the morning show? <laughs> <laughs> no, man, they're actually really, really nice. I was really, like, suspect when they first joined. Did you think that they were media corp spies? Or <laughs> <laughs> I did. I really did for the first couple of months. And Glenn is, like, overly nice he is just so nice so i'm just like no you can't really be that nice but he yeah. really is so yeah i enjoy both i find it hard to believe because he sounds like a snarky guy yeah. he sounds like a very Total you know, sarcastic he is oh. really snarky on radio but off air he's the sweetest person ever i'm just a bitch throughout so i'm consistent <laughs> Another show has quietly arrived on Sunday nights on AMC. It's creeping up on you and it's the dark Vertigo Comics favourite preacher. The once unfilmable comic book series has now been televised with Dominic Cooper playing the titular character and from what we've seen on the pilot, it looks like Seth Rogen, one of the executive producers of the show, has absolved himself from his Green Hornet past. Yeah, I hated his version. <laughs> Such a bad movie, CD. Yeah, such a bad movie. The show is dark and has captured the essence of all the characters that appear in the comic book, including Arseface. Arseface? So, yeah, there's there's actually yeah. a guy called Arseface. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> he literally looks like, I mean, his whole face, like the mouth, is looks like an anus. It's, it's really cool, you should Google it. <laughs> That is dope. That sounds yeah. like a great movie. Check the trailer out. On the next episode of Preacher. We watched you. We've been patient, but now we're out of time. Preacher's got a power. He made Mr. Kim Kane do thing. This doesn't feel like you. It's not me. If we get this wrong, it'll be the end of us. He betrayed you. He wasn't the man you thought he was. Don't you worry about Preacher. You'll get what he deserves. For more video, go to amc.com. Okay, next we hit Heartbreak Hotel with yeah. breakups, divorces, and the like. So the news of the day mm-hmm. is Johnny Depp's recent divorce with Amber Heard that's getting uglier and uglier by the day. With a restraining order being slapped on Depp along with accusations that he had been abusing uh, his wife. So anyway, um, besides the uh, Johnny Depp and Amber Heard, uh, you know, fiasco and debacle, <laughs> debacle, purposely said it debacle, uh, we've also had news that Taylor Swift has officially broken off with Bo, Calvin Harris. Skank. Yes, and X1, <laughs> and X1 Directioner Zane has also recently broken ties with his girlfriend, Perry Edwards. Douche. Check this out. <laughs> More images of Amber Heard's bruised face from yet another alleged beating at the hands of husband Johnny Depp are revealed, and we have the shocking details. When this divorce battle began with Amber claiming in court documents that on May 21st of 2016, Johnny showed up to their home drunk and high, grabbed her by the hair, shoved her to the floor, and smashed an iPhone into her face in a violent fight that brought police to the scene. Fans of Perry Edwards and Zayn Malik were shocked yesterday upon hearing the news that the engagement was off, and now Perry has broken her silence. Little Mix is on a press tour promoting their new album, Get Weird, and after the news of Perry and Zayn's breakup came out yesterday, Perry was dreading the inevitable question. Sadly, Taven is over after only 15 months of dating. This comes as a shock because Taylor and Calvin seem so in love, but E! Online is reporting that while the split was super amicable, Calvin started to lose interest in the past few months, and he and Taylor became more like friends than lovers. What's going on? Is there some bad divorce star? 
hanging around in Hollywood. I do not know about Johnny Depp and Amber Heard, but I think Taylor Swift just ran out of ideas for songs. Through <laughs> so, that. Through this, this, this breakup, um, let's expect the next song that is going to be written about Kelvin Harris and she can use that to hit number one again because she has been quiet, right? Yeah, yeah. I think the song, I think the title of the song is going to be called Kelvin Harris. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. dear Adam. <laughs> Or Taylor Swift should get together with Harry and become a couple. Then they can break out and she can write a, a better song. Oh my god. <laughs> that would be a Are great song. Yeah. yeah, they should exchange numbers, right? Yeah. <laughs> Coming back to the Amber Heard Johnny Depp thing, I think the whole fiasco is just, I think it's gone too far. Like, do, do you do you guys actually believe um, any of her accusations? Because I don't, I, I don't really? think that there's any water. Well... I don't know. It just feels like she's trying to scam the authorities for like money because there was no prenuptial agreement, right? So I don't know. I feel like there's a scam in there somewhere, um, and I'm not really sure. You know, I feel like you know, yeah, Johnny Depp could have gotten a little bit more violent in his, you know, as he gets older. You never know. But well, drugs do strange things to you. So I mean, if- yeah, well. We we will see. It's not right to hit girls, and it's not right for girls to lie about getting hit. But back to Taylor mm. Swift. What I'm <laughs> thinking is she needs to stop dating guys and writing songs about them. She should start dating a girl. I yeah. love to see what music comes out of that. Yeah. yeah. So right? I, I'm all for T- Taylor and Harry together. But apparently the uh, news was that Taylor Swift, I mean, apparently Calvin Harris spoke up about it and said that basically he wasn't into her. Oh. As much as she was uh, into him. Yeah, she does uh, look like that sort. She looks so boring. Yeah, right. Yeah. She, looks like a, she looks like a plank with eyes. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. she, she is damn skinny though. Like, freaking skinny. I just don't know where, like, what meat is there on her. There's- no, but I'm still trying to figure out talent-wise. Okay, forget about how she looks, but talent-wise, I don't... I don't get what's so great about her. I mean, she doesn't have, like, an amazing singing voice. She doesn't... Mm-hmm. Like she's she's like you know Jill said she was like a skank, <laughs> and she's so tiny, tiny. I don't I don't get why everyone's so crazy about her. I just don't get it. You know she's not I catchy tunes. Adele. I mean she's like Britney Spears. Britney Spears didn't have a good voice, but she had really catchy tunes. But at least Britney Spears had a good body, right? Like she could do things with her with her assets. <laughs> you know, <laughs> right? That was back in the nineties, though. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like, even J-Lo, I understand, like, okay, she's hot. You know, she's hot mama, you know. Um, who else? Who, who, who else is, like, the, like Nicki Minaj? Okay, she doesn't have much talent, but she's got a personality, <laughs> you know. I'm sorry, I'm just and screaming. Hair. Yeah. Yeah. Well, she can and shake her booty really that. well. She can twerk very well. That's I'm sorry. Sure. I'm, I'm a rock chick. Okay, I'm always be a rock chick, so. She's, she's like the Justin Bieber version for the females, lah. In a way, in a way, you know, she attracts. She just gives them catchy tunes and she just sings and, you know, yeah. puts a sultry look here and there. And, yeah, that's it, people. That's it. Yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll still give it to Miley Cyrus. Like, Miley Cyrus, I know she's very annoying, but at least that girl can sing, you know? Agreed. So, yeah. Totally agree. But, yeah, so Taylor Swift, mm, yeah, I think it's time for you to start dating a chair. <laughs> that's all I can say. <laughs> but I think her cats are more interesting, though. I think her... She has two Scottish foes, and I think they have more personality than her. And how boring is it that she named them Meredith? That just shows <laughs> you this girl is, is she's a 70 year old. Yeah, I think so. She's actually a grandma in disguise, right? Rock and roll, dead. Uh, rock and roll. Uh, I guess we've just reached this saturation point with ideas, and it, everything does indeed to me feel like a rehash. No, definitely not. <laughs> it's hiding. It's hiding. Yeah. It's a bit quiet at the moment. Yeah, right. It's turning into something else. I'm looking at the bands that are popular, it's not really like uh, there's not that much attitude in there. It's more about like you know check out how tight my jeans are or yeah, how like thick black frame. It's more I... about the fashion and the hipster scene and just 
very pretentious people. Which... <laughs> Whereas opposed to the big fuck you, rock and roll should be about. Ah, okay. <laughs> Nikki Wyatt, is rock dead? I think rock as I know and love it does seem dormant at the moment. If you're talking about uh, the inspiration of the Smiths or the Sex Pistols, um, or even parts of the Stones and the Who, that exotic kind of, I want to be in that band, I want to follow their lifestyle. Perhaps the Libertines are the last band to do that. Another big question then, which is what has gone wrong? I think it all. Be, I think the democratization of music through the internet basically allowed everyone think thought they could be in a band. That you know, it's just like getting a job at Top Shop. We'll just <laughs> try that out for six months. You know, we'll try being in a band, and therefore you had such a mediocre kind of indie landfill, if you want to call it that. In other news, we have we are sadly saying goodbye to the demise of rock and roll with the deaths of so many icons this year and hardly any rock bands making the charts. What do you guys think about the state of music today? Q, Jill, go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to, be, to be honest though, like, yeah, I get it. Everyone's dying, but I mean, why, why are you shocked? They're old. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. David Bowie, I get it, but I don't really buy a lot of people my age saying, yeah, he was so revolutionary. He was great. You don't do drugs. If you don't do drugs, you don't get David Bowie. So let's not pretend that you're a diehard <laughs> fan right now. <laughs> Prince, okay, yeah, I get it. But at the same time, Michael Jackson would have been more our thing. Not, not mm. dissing my generation, but just mm. it's, it's kind of gross when everyone's suddenly jumping on the death bandwagon. And when Lemmy died, it's like suddenly everyone's a Motorhead fan. And I've, I've never been a Motorhead fan. So I was like, okay, yeah. cool, he, he died. I mean, that sucks, yeah. but let, let's get on with life. No, they're getting old and they're getting fat. I mean, like, look at Gene Simmons from Kiss. I, I mean, know, Look right? at Ozzy Osbourne. You know, it's a good, it was good timing that Sharon divorced him at the time that she did. <laughs> <laughs> this is like too many pounds for me to hang on to this. So, um, yeah, I mean, like, but I mean, I don't know. Like, you guys man a radio station that plays predominantly male skewed rock music, right? Yes. And, you know, sometimes you do have classic rock playing on your, on your station. But, you know, there's always been this talk in the last few years that, you know, music has really suffered a lot in terms of originality and creativity and yes. even showmanship, which is something that rock and roll icons and stars were so good at doing. And the thing is, like, I, I mean, for me, I think I don't just mourn the creativity and the fact that there's no more music that really actually gets my blood pumping. Because a lot of the indie stuff, sorry, Raven. Goodbye, <laughs> yeah. A just, lot of the indie music today, I mean, like an alternative indie music sounds like they're either high, you know, yeah. or they're just like, you know, they're in some Hare Krishna group, you know, and they're like so mellow and so let's chill. I mean, so, some of the indie stuff, I guess, are pretty good. Like uh, um, the struts are okay, but they do sound a lot like an old school 70s rock band. Strumbella is right. all right. Kellyo is okay. But yeah. about how rock music is not making the charts anymore, I think that's really sad because it sucks because they're not mainstream <laughs> enough for people to assess them. There are a lot yeah. of really good rock bands. In fact, if you read, like if, you're, if you follow the music, a lot of them are coming up with new albums like Charlotte, Blink-182, Green Day, mm -hmm. Brand New, Trice. Everyone's got new music out. It's just that they're no longer in the mainstream market for everyone to go, hey, brand new, that sounds Exactly, great. right? Yeah. yeah. Mm. It's kind of sad, actually. Even like Foo Fighters' latest release was like quite under the radar. And oh, like... no, okay, let's not go to Foo Fighters because I will forever be biased towards them. <laughs> they are the best band in the world and full stop. Yeah, that's but I, it. Mean, I, mean, I mean, that's the kind of like, I mean, that's the kind of music that like, you know, I mean, I didn't really grow up, but it was like in my early, like, like late teens, that was the kind of music I, like, I used to listen to. And it was like blood pumping music, it was excitable music, music that really went, that made you went like raw, you know, but like, there's no music now that really like makes me feel excited anymore, or gives me goosebumps. And that I think it's like, you know, I don't know. What do you guys think? Like, do you think there's going to be like a revival at some point, or do you think we're just going to go the mellow way? I think the second the coming future? is coming. Okay. Okay. But you got to. I mean, you got to look for it because. Yeah. I mean, there's this band Let Live, which I really like. They're mm -hmm. not played on radio, obviously, but you need to go on YouTube or Spotify is good. And uh, yeah. this Canadian band, the Flatliners, they are great. But you oh, know, yeah. you're never going to hear them. And if you don't 
go on and find the music yourself, you're forever mm-hmm. going to be just listening to radio thinking, oh yeah, there's no rock music anymore. <laughs> City, you used to manage a band. What do you think? Oh my gosh. Okay. Um, it's uh, yeah, it, it's true. Like right now, I think it's I part of it is uh, the trend as well. Because right now, if you know, there's a lot of dance stuff. I mean, Justin Bieber did Justin Bieber did the whole shift from you know whatever teeny poppy thing that he was doing, and then he grew up, and then he decided to put dance into it. And I think there's a trend right now, like Kevin Harris. Mm-hmm. Everything has a bit of dance feel. So rock is good, like in the shadows now. Yeah. But I, I agree with Jill that I think the second coming is coming. Like, mm-hmm. I, the, all these bands are all hibernating and you know how rock bands are, they're very much like, this is my material, I feel the time is right, then we'll get it out. They're very much like that. Not yeah. like, oh, we have to get a, we have to get an album out right now because everybody has an album out. They're not like that. They're like, mm-hmm. like, okay, it's ready. Are we ready to really, is this good? Is this good enough? They're very perfectionist in that way, I yeah. think. Yeah. You know? So I, when they do come out and they explode, it will be like, whoa, all over again, you know? Like, yeah, but like, it also has to be a new sound. You can't just like take something from the past and kind of repurpose it because we've seen that with like The Darkness, you know, bands like The Darkness uh, back in the early 2000s, you know, we've seen that, you know, um, happen. I don't know about that. Like for um, when Scorpions came out with their new song, We Built This House, it sounded exactly like Rocky Like a Hurricane, which I was totally unimpressed with. And then you've got bands like Def Leppard who came out with new music that sounded exactly... Um, Def Leppard and ACDC came, coming out with new music, which had the distinctive ACDC Def Leppard sound, which is not being very original, but I totally dug it. I was like, yes, finally. Because yeah. um, when... What's his face? Oh. Angus Young from ACDC? No, what was it? Deep Purple, I think? Oh, no, years uh, ago. Yeah, when, a yeah, couple okay. years ago when Deep Purple mm-hmm. came out and their music did not sound anything like the classic Deep Purple. And when yeah. Axl Rose did Guns N' Roses, uh, Chinese <laughs> Democracy didn't sound anything like Guns N' Roses. I did not like that. I was like, no, I would like my rock to sound like my rock. The rock yeah, that I'm familiar with. Because it was their DNA. It was the sound that they made, right? So you kind of want them to stick to it. But not all bands do that. Like Coldplay... I mean, when they first start, yeah, <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> like, when they first started out, they were, like, pretty decent. But then now, they're kind of starting to sound like some electronic, electronic band. I'm yeah. like, what's going on, you know? But see, then, wouldn't that be original to you, now that they're taking a different route? They're not copying yeah. the old sound? I kind of like what Radiohead does. Like, you know, how Radiohead... Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I mean, like, Radiohead took a more electronic sound, but you can still see that there is a Radioheadness Understand. in their yeah. music. Um, but here it just sounds very strange that you know, you know, Chris Martin would say that okay, I'm just electrifying, electrifying my music. Mm-hmm. Um, but the thing is, like, it's so weird that they would still classify that as rock or alternative, even when it doesn't really have a lot of jangling guitars. Life, or... life went to shit when they gave Lords best rock music video. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. There's nothing wrong at all about like her album no offense to her but there's nothing rock about her album at all please don't feed me because i know what i want please deliver me that song out of your soul it makes you freeze time staring in at yourself it's time to step outside onto the path you once made Guys, do you see anything at the fountain? I just can't imagine where Joanna might be. This is so sad. Oh. Calm down, Raven. Calm down. Chill. Any ideas, Persons or Jill? You guys seem like too cool and collected about all this. Well, I am. This is not the first time the fountain has sucked someone into it. Yeah, it's a baptism of sorts. If Joanna passes the fountain's musical test, it might just spit her out in one piece. Hmm. Think about that. Ah! Just in time. What's that? While Joanna goes through the baptism of the rock and roll fountain, we need to answer a few of its questions too. Are you saying we have to take a musical test too again? Uh, what does it say, Persis? It says, play the CD in order to win your mojo back. Really? Hmm. CD? Who plays the CD anyway? What are we waiting for? Just play it! Greetings, musicians. 
If you hear my voice, then I assume you've retrieved a CD player containing the questions for your musical test. Oh my god, I'm so nervous. This is not good. I need to pee. Can we go pee? Shh, 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 shh. If you answer the next five questions correctly, you will get your friend and your mojo back. And what if you don't? If you don't, hmm, then you, along with your friend Joanna, will fade into obscurity forever. <laughs> I could live with that. Obscurity has a million dollar bungalow and a jacuzzi. Indeed, he has, Jill. But you forget that to enter the house of obscurity means losing your identities eternally. <laughs> eternally, forever, like all these musical fountain threads coming for certain level of infinity, doesn't it? So, are you ready, ladies? Here's the first question. Name the Who song that was featured on the CBS Detective Procedural Series, CSI. Okay, are we just talking about their CSI or their different versions of CSI? The CSI Las Vegas. Las Vegas. Is it Who Are You? I only know how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> I only know how it sounds like. I'm like, yeah, that song, that song. Okay, so we'll do it to Raven. Yay, yay, yeah, all right. So, here's the second question, guys. And you can Google this if you have time. <laughs> Who was John Lennon's first wife's name? Or what was John Lennon's first wife's name? Ka oh, Kathy, was to Cin Kathy Cynthia, Cin some, something. Oh, you're close. You're right there. Cynthia. Oh, I thought it was Kathy. Who the heck's Kathy? <laughs> 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 okay, it's not more appropriate like Kathy Lennon for, for some reason. Cynthia is such an ugly name. <laughs> I think it's because... It's not rocket rock. I think it's because Kathy sounds very English, right? Yeah, Wasn't yeah, his yeah, first yeah. wife an English woman? Yeah. Yeah. Well, Yoko is much better, so... <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's the third question. Which band has been accredited as the godfather of heavy metal? Jing jing jing. Oh gosh. I know this because my husband is a big fan of them. It's Ozzy Osbourne, so it's Black Sabbath. Definitely. For sure. Yes! <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> Correct once again. You guys are too good. Okay, here's the fourth question. It's tricky. Uh -huh. And it doesn't involve Ozzy Osbourne. Okay. Which band is the top selling rock band of the 2000s? Oh, that's so long ago. Wait. <laughs> oh my god, you guys. 2000s is so long ago. <laughs> Arcade Fire, Linkin Park, I don't know. <laughs> uh, it's not who you think it is, okay? It's not like these modern bands that came out in the 90s or the, the, even the 2000s. It's a, it's a classic band. Metallica? DC? You have to go further back. Wow, Scorpions. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Let me give you a clue. Just now, I gave you a question. One of the members is in that band. The Beatles. Yes! Correct, CD! What? what? Really? What? Really? Yes. They released an album in the 2000s, it's called One or something. And it became like the top selling album of the 2000s. Interesting! <laughs> Yeah, yeah interesting. I thought, I thought it was the I thought it was the Rolling Bones. Like, you know, sounds more like them. The Rolling Bones or Rolling Stones? So, yeah, they are, they are bones now. Come on, they used to be stones, but now they are Rolling bo Bones instead. The Rolling Bones. Okay. <laughs> all right. Ah, oh, you're insulting all the rock bands, Raven. Hey, I like them, but you can't deny that you know H has caught up with them. Dude, do you want your mojo back? <laughs> okay, fine, fine, fine. Okay. And here's the final question. Ready? 
It's another trick question. Uh-huh. Which of the following was not a former member of Metallica? Okay, which of the following was not a former member of Metallica? Dave Mustaine, Cliff Burton, Nick Menza, or Jason Newsted? Nick Menza. Nick Menza. Gah, congratulations. You have passed the test. Yeah, all right. I'm very impressed. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead and get a t-shirt after this. Yeah? Autographed? Yeah, yeah oversized 90s looking black metal t-shirt. <laughs> now I suppose you can go enjoy your super stardom. Yeah! <laughs> Goodbye, ladies. Oh, and before I forget... I think you forgot your friend. Okay, guys, look, the fountain's boiling. We got all the questions right, so that means the fountain is giving us not only our instruments back, but also your mojo. Okay, so that means I have to go get ready to introduce you guys for the show. I'll see you on stage, and remember, for, for those about to rock, we salute you. Good luck, girls. Right on. product from the 70s. Ew, and it's used! Yeah, ew! Gross! Oh, get that away from me. Uh-oh. Well, you may think it's gross, but it actually belonged to Joan Jett when she was in the Runaways. Oh, I see. That's cool, but I mean, how is it going to help our performance? We're going to cheer our hair and let the power of rock and roll take over here. Put some on your hair. Here, 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 here. Oh my god, it's very sticky. Uh, oh, it's in my fingers. Ew. 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 Uh, Ew. This, feels, this feels like a three-day-old sex lubricant. Ew, ew, ew. Stop complaining, <laughs> Raven. There's too many ews. <laughs> you see, it's power later at the show. Now, are we ready? Yes. yes. I feel like a sex toy. I'm so sticky. Ladies and gentlemen, and our next act in the School of Rock's annual Rock Fest showdown is the winners of last year's hard rocking metal waves, the tomboy T Rados with Rock On Sisters. is going wild! Woohoo! Join us right! Our mojo is kicking in! Yo! What's up, guys? I've never played so hard in my life before! It's so fun! Tell you guys, it's all in that hair gel! Oh, my bass! 
How do we stop it? You cannot stop the mojo, top boys. The mojo will make you rock stars. <laughs> Kneel down to me, the mojo. Hey guys, guys, we have to get off the stage. I want everybody to shut their ears. You're right, the music is getting too loud. I can't hear myself. Johanna, it's all your fault! I told you that hair gel was bad news, not to mention the hairstyle. Hey, the, the, the mojo told me this was how we could make our music sound better. How was I to know? You know nothing, Joanna. Too late, town boys. Your amazing rock talent plus my mojo will rock the house down. You belong to me now. <laughs> What's happening here? Why is the ground shaking? Save yourself and get everyone out of here, Jill. Our music is causing the auditorium to collapse around us. It's that evil rock mojo doing this. Everyone leave the auditorium now. That's right. Get out, everyone. Get out of here right now. Yes, right. Run. 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 Get out, Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. Wow, what a performance! It was definitely a showdown! Yeah, our music may have brought the house down, like literally. But for all the wrong reasons, still, it's cool! Uh, yeah, it's cool and it brought the house down, but you know what? Personally, no more rock modules for us guys. Moral of the story, if we want to be rock superstars, we need to practice, practice, practice! Oh, take the easy route and be a rock radio DJ. <laughs> yeah, maybe that should be the way to go. So, guys, if you want to hear more of us, don't forget to subscribe to Tomboy T Rod on iTunes and Stitcher. The show is also available for free streaming on our website where you'll find all sorts of stuff on being a funny geek tomboy in space time today. Check it out at the best place to be www.tomboy charts.com. Yes. That's right! If you just want to connect with us outside the show, we are also on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Tumblr. Just type Tomboy Tons! And if you want to advertise, collaborate, or appear on this podcast or our blog, then drop us an email at hello at tomboy tarts.com. That's hello at tomboy tarts.com. And we are everywhere, guys! Everywhere! everywhere. two weeks with a brand new episode here with Raven, Persis, City and myself, Joanna. Until then, ciao! And adios, amigos, babies! Rock on!